So I have a question for you. Was a conversation with Fred ever finished? I mean, they ended, but they were never over. I mean, have any one of you ever come away from speaking with him saying, I've heard his last word on this? <laughs> I guess even if he lived to be 100, we would say that. And part of the measure of the loss that I feel is all those conversations that I won't hear, that we won't hear. So today, uh, it's a matter of doing our best with our words to match the wonder of his. I hope you will hear that. First, I want to apologize if there weren't enough programs. I thought I was overdoing it when I was making them, but I think so. you can't hear. Okay, Donald, turn it up. Talk really close to it. The first thing I want to do is express my thanks and appreciation to all the wonderful people in this community who have been supportive along the way. Um, I really can't say enough for this amazing group of people that surround us. I'm never going to make it through if I start out at the beginning like this. We've all been on this journey with Fred and his illness for the past 12 years. But the past 12 weeks, in many ways, have been particularly hard. And a lot of generosity of many people has made all that's been hard more possible. What does one, what does one say about life with Fred Servine that captures that experience? Fred was always a person of thought and new intellectual discovery. He never stopped reading and writing and talking. It was a good day when there had been good stimulating conversation. One of the hardest, saddest parts at the end of Fred's life as he spent six weeks at Milo Cancer Center was his loss of time to read and have in-depth conversations with the people in his life. More than once I arrived at Smilo and Fred would comment, I can't get 10 minutes without interruption here. He nonetheless managed to read Iris Murdoch's The Message to the Planet of nearly 600 pages and was starting Simon Schaumann's Citizens, A Chronicle of the French Revolution, which was so heavy I could barely carry it to deliver to him. I started using this pulley thing for suitcases to take things in. For Fred, a good day was a day that had time for reading and a chance for good conversation. Fred was passionate about so many things, philosophy, poetry, music, movies, gardening, and of course his beloved bioregion. Fred has always been known for his ability to talk. His mind was always spilling with ideas he wanted to share, ideas he wanted others to respond to. Our life was never boring. Fred would read poetry to me and cry. He appreciated that I was a strong, feisty woman who lo loved to dig in the dirt, getting sweaty and dirty. We loved each other for our weaknesses and our strengths. Our life together was punctuated by our daily dose of sitting together and talking, usually for at least an hour before going to bed. We pondered everything together, large and small. During those last weeks in the hospital, I would sometimes be preparing to leave, and Fred would say to me, don't go yet. 
I haven't had my dose for today. Fred inspired many of us, but he was also inspired by many others in this community. Many of us carry the remnants of past conversations with Fred. Many of us want to pick up those conversations and continue. Fred's energy and enthusiasm were catching. His laugh came from the core of his being and went to the core of those with him. Fred and I met through a personal ad in The Advocate. In those days, we didn't do it online. It was just before his 52nd birthday and my 50th. For 21 years, we had wonderful adventures together. Some were here in our bioregion, others were far afield. In all of those adventures, whether in our garden or visiting Oaxaca, Mexico, we had the quality of complimenting each other and what was happening. At home, we joked about the boy jobs and the girl jobs. There were the things that Fred knew about and the things that I knew about. I always felt like together we were able to pull it off better. What a gift. Not hardly a day passes when I don't think, oh, I need to ask Fred about that. Or to call him up and tell him how great the new driveway is over at the UU. As I think about Fred's last year of life, I am grateful that it was only the last six weeks that he could no longer walk his beloved bioregion, dig in the dirt, and take, out the, take in the outdoor environment. At one point during the last days of his stay in the hospital, he commented that he felt like he was understanding the adjustment people had to make to being incarcerated. There's certainly much more that I could say about dear Fred. I will always be grateful for his role in my life. It's been an amazing experience to love and be loved by Fred. Pull it together, girl. I will close with a poem that I read to Fred on his 65th birthday at his party that we had for him. Reasons why I love Fred because he writes a great personal ad, <laughs> because he's a passionate outsider, because he's a carpenter, a real man, because he's always finding a new book and then tells me about it, because no matter what or who someone talks about, he's read a book about it and remembers all of it, <laughs> because he loves great music and always searches for more, because he loves movies and opera and all manner of art, because he's just weird enough, because he's fun to laugh and giggle with, but also easy to be sad with, because he watches birds and knows all about them, because he loves to explore the back country, because he loves our Mother Earth and inspires us to walk her by region, because he's a dream-addicted poet, because every day I feel a piece of his love. So here's to you, dear Fred. Who would ever have thought that being over the hill could be so much fun? <laughs> <laughs>